So you're a lifter and you wanna take things to the next level. You're about to do your first steroid cycle and you've heard of gyno, hair loss, and acne, but what about brain damage? Yep, anabolic steroids can cause neurodegeneration. So unless you're planning to be an American politician. You need to make the brew beer do this. Oh, Earth Riders. And a string of uh, Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah. Watch this video so you can understand how neurodegeneration is occurring, and by knowing how it's occurring, how we can mitigate it. Kenny Yama et al. reported that visuospatial memory of long-term anabolic steroid users was significantly worse than in anabolic steroid non-users. Moreover, the same authors reported that visuospatial performance showed a significant negative correlation with the total lifetime anabolic steroid dosing. These observations are in line with the experimental data reported by Perietti et al., who demonstrated that rats administered with superphysiologic anabolic steroids steroid doses showed spatial memory deficits. But how are anabolic steroids impacting our brain health? I'm going to break it up into four different categories. Direct neurotoxicity, oxidative stress and neuroinflammation, neurotransmitter dysregulation, and vascular impairment. Androgens have been shown to directly drive neuronal apoptosis, which is just a fancy way of saying brain cell death. This seems to occur through something called excitotoxicity, which is just a fancy way of saying the cell is stimulated to a toxic level. See, what happens is the androgens combine to a receptor that causes a large stimulation. This large stimulation causes a large influx of calcium into the cell, and that large influx of calcium leads to apoptosis or cell death. Very high concentrations of testosterone were able to amplify neuronal excitotoxicity. On the contrary, low testosterone concentrations seemed to be protective. Testosterone was inactive at intermediate concentrations. However, the presence of aromatase inhibitors made even low concentrations of testosterone neurotoxic, therefore suggesting that aromatization of testosterone into 17 beta estradiol could counterbalance its intrinsic toxicity. Contrary to testosterone, noratestosterone, stanozolo, and gesturonone amplified NMDA toxicity at nanomolar concentrations was insensitive to aromatase inhibitors, but was arbogated by the androgen receptor antagonist flutamide. None of these anabolic steroids was toxic in absence of NMDA. These results led to the hypothesis that anabolic steroids increase neuronal vulnerability to excitotoxic insults and may therefore induce neuronal death observed in acute chronic neurological diseases. So low levels of testosterone was actually seen to be neuroprotective, intermediate levels of testosterone or normal levels of testosterone had no impact, and high levels of testosterone was neurotoxic. And estrogen was actually able to offset the neurotoxicity, which is well demonstrated in the literature. But what do most guys do on steroids? Lower estrogen. Stop trying to lower your estrogen. They also talked about how compounds like Winstrol and Nandrolone were toxic at even micro concentrations. And they took that even further and said that Nandrolone and D-Ball specifically caused neuronal apoptosis apoptosis and cause beta amyloid plaque. Beta amyloid plaque is essentially this protein that clogs up our brain cells and leads to diseases like Alzheimer's. Numerous studies have shown that nandrolone directly negatively impacts brain health, so I suggest we just stop using it altogether. Now, if you're a bodybuilder and you're assuming the risk, you understand your risk, you still wanna do it, fine, go ahead. But can we please stop prescribing this as TRT? It's not TRT. So outside of not using neurotoxic chemicals like nandrolone, what else can we do? Well, this study and numerous other studies show the protective benefits of estradiol. We know estradiol is neuroprotective and seems to offset this excitotoxicity. So let's stop trying to lower estrogen. Let's use a testosterone base and bring our estrogen up as high as we can tolerate, meaning as high as we can tolerate without symptoms. So until you get things like gynecomastia or water retention to an undesired level. But never try to directly crush your estradiol unless you're a bodybuilder about to go on the stage and you understand your risks. Bros, estrogen is our friend. So we talked about how steroids act directly on the neuron and cause cell death, but another way that steroids cause cell death is indirectly through inflammation. Now this gets a little tricky because the data seem to say that steroids can actually be neuroprotective against oxidative stress when oxidative stress is low, but if oxidative stress is high, then androgens actually exacerbate the neurodegeneration. And unfortunately at its core, bodybuilding is highly inflammatory and drives a ton of oxidative stress. Resistance training, especially to near failure as needed for hypertrophy, will significantly increase oxidative stress. 
Food in excess levels needed for growth is inflammatory. Yes, every food, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, regardless if it's organic or processed, drive inflammation. Usually a little bit of inflammation from food is not an issue, but when we take it to extremes as bodybuilders, it becomes problematic. The carrier oils and solvents used in steroid preparations are often highly inflammatory, especially if you're getting them from underground sources. And androgens at high levels also have been shown to drive oxidative stress. Just like exercise, food, etc., at normal levels, a small amount of inflammation is not a problem, but at the excessive level required to be a bodybuilder, they're problematic. So at baseline as bodybuilders, we have a ton of oxidative stress and the anabolic steroids seem to amplify the damage to neurons. And this is actually well documented in other scenarios. Stroke, for example, men have way more post-stroke Parkinson's disease than women do, which tells us this post-stroke Parkinson's is driven by more androgens. And again, shows us that the high levels of estrogen in women are actually probably neuroprotective. So what can we do? Increase your antioxidants. Here's a list of my favorite antioxidants. First, add more fruits and vegetables in your diet. That should be your base. On top of that, add four grams of fish oil a day, 1200 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine a day, three plus grams of melatonin at night if you can tolerate it, and around 600 milligrams of glutathione twice a week. This one is directly tied into the last two. Androgens impact neurotransmitter producing cells like dopaminergic, serotonergic, gabinergic, and glutamatergic neurons, just to list a few. The most widely studied are the effects on dopaminergic neurons, which, as you probably guessed, produce dopamine. Studies have experimentally demonstrated an apoptotic effect of high dosages of anabolic steroids. Cunningham et al. showed that physiologically relevant doses of androgens induce neurotoxicity in dopaminergic neurons. They showed that androgens bind to the androgen receptor within dopaminergic neurons drive up inflammation and cause apoptosis. Again, if you forgot, that's just cell suicide. Dysregulation of dopaminergic neurons can lead to Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, movement disorders, ADHD, and drug addiction all of which have been linked to steroid use. The same mechanism has been shown in GABAergic cells, which can lead to anxiety disorders, insomnia, and schizophrenia. Anxiety, insomnia, and schizophrenia. Sounds like trend to me. Other mood disorders seem to be linked to a depletion of BDNF, which means brain-derived neurotropic factor. A biochemical basis for the steroid-induced neuropsychiatric sequelae has been hypothesized from the observation that in rats administered with high doses of anabolic steroids, levels of brain-derived neurotropic factor in the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex are reduced by stanozolo. Just in case you didn't know, stanozolo is also known as Winnie or Winstrol. Now for this, my recommendations are essentially the exact same. Stay away from neurotoxic chemicals like Winstrol and Nandrolone. Increase your antioxidants as much as you can and increase your estrogen to a tolerable level. After that, you may want to introduce a compound like this. This is cerebral lysin, which is essentially pig, BDNF, and other proteins that have been shown to reduce neurodegeneration and neuroapoptosis. The last thing we'll talk about here is vascular impairment. Now, if you've watched any of my content up until this point, you know that anabolic steroids have a massive negative effect on our vascular system. But when most of us think about vascular health, we usually think about the heart and the peripheral tissues, but actually the same vessels that go to our peripheral tissues go to our brain too. So if we have impairments to our vascular system, we're going to impact our brain health. Now let's do one last deep dive into some science shit so we can understand how vascular disease occurs. It all starts in the innermost layer of our arteries called the endothelium. This is a small single cell layer that is really easy to damage. When this damage occurs, an ApoB containing particles can stick to that damaged part of the endothelium and they let out their cholesterol contents into the endothelium where cholesterol gets stuck in the subendothelial layer. The cholesterol can then get oxidized and the oxidized cholesterol mounts an immune response. Your body sends these little Pac-Man looking creatures called macrophages to the cholesterol. They try to eat them up, they turn into something called a foam cell, and this whole other cascade occurs where plaque eventually forms. And that's really all you need to take away from this is that plaque is going to form if you damage that endothelial lining. Think of this as the same as like a clogged pipe, or in this case, a clogged toilet paper roll with some mayonnaise in it. The more the mayonnaise builds up, the lumen or the inside of the pipe narrows so less and less blood can get through. And eventually this can clog off the entire pipe or it can lead to some of this mayonnaise or plaque breaking off, making its way to a narrower vessel and cutting off the blood flow there. When that occurs, we can have death of tissue, like to the heart, that's called a heart attack, myocardial infarction, and when that happens to the brain, that's called a stroke, cerebrovascular event. Ugh, what am I supposed to do with this? It's disgusting. I'll be right back. 
or even if we don't have a stroke, but we just have clogged arteries and we're reducing blood flow to our brain, we're starving our neurons of things like oxygen and nutrients, which you guessed it, causes brain cell death. But let's step it back to the beginning of the equation, which is the endothelium and discuss how steroids impact the endothelium. It happens in quite a few ways. One would be through increasing blood pressure. You see androgens increase what's called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which leads to vasoconstriction or narrowing of arteries and increased blood volume by increasing water retention. So not only do you have more blood, but you have narrower arteries. This increases blood pressure and that increased blood pressure causes mechanic stress or damage to the endothelium. The other would be through oxidative stress, which as we discussed earlier is just inherent to androgens, but also think about the carrier oils and the solvents that are inside the anabolic steroids that you're getting. They are highly inflammatory. And of course, the main ingredient here is ApoB containing particles, which androgens seem to drive up the production of ApoB containing particles and drive down the production of ApoA1 containing particles like HDL. And that's not a good combo. So all the previous recommendations stand, but now we need to focus on lowering our blood pressure and lowering our ApoB containing particles. And to do that, we need to measure them. So to measure them, first, get yourself a blood pressure cuff. These things are cheap. Every bodybuilder, every steroid user should definitely have one of these and invest in really in-depth lab work, which measures your ApoB containing particles. If you can afford steroids, then you should be able to afford labs. And if you can't afford labs, well then you can't afford steroids. It's just part of it. You need to do this. It's very, very important. Your target for blood pressure should always be 120 over 80 or below. If it's any higher than 120 over 80, I would definitely consider either one coming off the gear or lowering the dose or figuring out something like increasing cardio that can lower it. But if it requires pharmacology, my favorite comment compounds are the ARBs, angiotensin II receptor blockers like telmosartan. But figure that out with your doctor. And when it comes to ApoB, I like anything 60 and below. I'm pretty aggressive with mine. I honestly try to keep my ApoB around 30. I like taking everything to extremes. Moderation's for cowards. To keep your ApoB low, focus on diet and reducing saturated fat, increasing fiber intake, and again, increasing your fruits and vegetables so you have high amounts of antioxidants. Now, if you're doing all of that and your ApoB remains high, well, again, you may need to rely on some pharmacology. And my favorite favorite drugs are azetamibe as a base. Azetamibe, because it's so mild, it virtually has no side effects. Unfortunately, it's not very strong, can only lower cholesterol by around 20%. But I would start there and then potentially, potentially add a statin. Yep, I said statin. I probably just lost half my subscribers. The fact is only around 5% of people actually have any side effects at all with statins. So they're really not all that bad. In no way am I recommending that everyone be on a statin. But I mean, come on, if you're willing to inject research chemicals and drugs made for horses like Trend and Equipoise, I think you can probably tolerate a little bit of a statin to offset your risk of cardiovascular disease. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. You could think differently. Now, none of this is made as propaganda to scare you against steroids. Honestly, if we made a video about drinking or smoking or even obesity, the neurodegenerative effects of those things, I think would far outweigh those of anabolic steroids. But if you're interested in bodybuilding, you're probably pretty interested in your health. And these are just some things that I wish I would have known when I was younger because no one was talking about this stuff. If I would have known that steroids were gonna make me this stupid, I probably would have thought twice. I could deal with the hair loss and the acne and the gyno, mainly because I wasn't really getting it. But honestly, if you would have told me that I was increasing my risk of heart disease and neurodegeneration, well, those are some side effects I really might have thought twice about. Those kind of things scare me. So I just think that we need to be a little bit more open about the possible effects of these things and how we can potentially offset them. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So again, I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other. I'm just trying to give you some advice that I wish that I had. You do whatever's best for you. And hopefully now you have some tools to maintain some brains while you make those gains. So fucking cheesy. My whole goal is to get you to your goals as safely as possible just like I did for Sam Sulik in this video. 